Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting and cross-stitch, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about self-care, productivity, and keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so grab yours, and let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 95. Hello, friends. Episode 95. I'm getting to that 100 episode mark, which is crazy. I think I'll hit it before I hit my, gosh, what would that be? Maybe five year podcast anniversary in February. So that's exciting. So I hope you have something fun to drink here in the Northern Hemisphere, maybe something, um, you know, warm and cozy and um, Southern Hemisphere, maybe some iced tea. I don't know. I am drinking Harney and Sons Paris. And this is, um, what does it say here? Um, yeah, where, what did it say? What did it taste like? Um, it has, this tea tastes like caramel and has a fruity flavor of black currants. You can also taste a hint of vanilla. I was reminded about Paris tea, which is one of my daughter's favorites, maybe her favorite. Um, well, I recently recorded a podcast episode for Stephanie over at the Make and Decorate podcast, Make and Decorate with Stephanie, and we were talking all things tea. She's also a fan of tea, and she was saying that her favorite was Paris, and I was thinking, I have not had some of that for a long time. I kind of um, horror of horrors had gotten away from using my loose leaf tea, so I p- pulled out my old Tivana perfect tea maker where you you know, put in a spoonful of loose leaf tea and put some water in it, let it brew, and then you set it over your cup and it the brewed tea empties into your cup and leaves you um you know so the the tea leaves in the little perfect tea maker and if you're buying high quality tea you can use those tea leaves more than once so it makes you know loose leaf tea can be a little bit expensive but you can think of it as being half of expensive if you get at least two cups of tea out of every serving and you can I've even done three just like over the course of a day like I, I don't take it from day to day but anyway so Paris is very fun so sometimes forget to talk about the tea we don't want to do that all right let me look at my notes what are we going to talk about today well i feel like fall is here proper now it's uh, getting really cold at night Um, i mean for southern california we're getting down into the low 40s and even sometimes into the 30s we actually had to turn the heater on for the first time this morning and it was not strictly necessary it was like 64 in the house and i just wanted a little bit warmer Um, we were living for i don't know a month or two in that beautiful time where you need neither air conditioning nor heating that's like the perfect thing for me and I can have doors and windows open a lot of the time I love my my fresh air and good light so fall fall is here and um yeah just I'm I'm enjoying the the change in weather and walking in the morning when it's a little bit cooler um I'm going to later today pull out Um, I have a couple winter quilts. I'm going to put away some of the lightweight, smaller quilts that I like to have out during the spring and summer. I'll give those a wash and put those away and pull out um, my favorite all-time quilt and definitely favorite winter quilt is this one that I did for, oh gosh, I think it was American Patchwork and Quilting. Um, I called it Wabi Sabi. They called it something else, Indigo Illusion, because it's one of those ones where it's made with a lot of half square triangles. And the way I put them together, it looks like there's curves, but there's not a single bit of curved piecing in that quilt. And I made it with this Boro line from Moda that has that, um, you know, that look of Sashiko stitching. And then the, um, the background was like linen i don't know what it was it was just the woven that went with that line it was this off white um and it looks like kind of a coarser linen and it just washed up so soft i remember when i made that quilt my friend holly ann quilted it beautifully over there at um, string and story and i remember sending her pictures as i was going to package it up to send to her and um that linen although i don't think it's really linen but it's coarser like that anyways it, I was trimming up the back of the quilt and there was just this huge pile because that you know it's a, a coarser weave so of course it was just fraying and fraying and fraying I was very happy to get it all quilted and <laughs> stabilized but um, so that quilt's coming out today and I'm very excited to have that one back in the rotation I also have one made with this adorable line from um, Minky Kim um, just a lot of uh, equilateral triangles with a low volume background which I really like 
Um, I think that one was in quilts and more, which has gone out of business, which is super sad. Um, so those are my two kind of winter quilts. I've got just one Christmas quilt, I think, and it's just patchwork of, um, you know, like, what was that? Maybe a Sweetwater design, just a very cute little Christmas design, just patchwork. And um, so I get, I was thinking, you don't need any Christmas quilts, but maybe I do. Lola Boutique, here, I'm, I'm jumping into the quilting segment for a second. Um, Lola Boutique, who is one of my favorite fabric designers, um, she's got this super cute um, Christmas Santa um, quilt pattern. I'll put it in the um, show notes if I remember which I know, I know I promise things and don't always deliver in the show notes. So always like leave a comment or send me a message or something. If you're like, you said you're going to give me a link for this. And cause it's just that I forgot, but anyways, it's a very cute little kind of Santa thing that maybe I need to do that. Okay. We're going to get to talk, talking quilting later. Um, so what else, uh, just like life update wise is going on. I'm going to be seeing a lot of the kids soon. Um, Ben was home the weekend before. Well, I guess he actually technically, left on Halloween. Um, he took the train up to see us. I always say down, but San- he's in San Diego and everything is up <laughs> almost from San Diego if you live in California. So he came home for a weekend, which is why I didn't podcast last weekend, which I had to laugh at myself later on because I really like cleared the decks. You know, I got all my cleaning done on Friday. And I'm just like, you know, I'm going to be just available. And then he was just like gone the whole weekend. <laughs> Um, but no, it's fine. So and now I just re- need to remember that's not a reason not to podcast. But um, so he was home and that was really, um, it was fun to see him. And, um, and then this like late Thursday night coming up, all three kids together are coming up to spend the weekend because we're going to a, a concert as a family, which we have not done since Oh gosh, I guess we all saw Paul McCartney at Dodger Stadium a few, you know, uh, <laughs> quite a few years ago. Um, so this is a um, a band called The Dip, who um, we really like, and it's in the super cool venue called the like the Belasco in L.A. So anyway, so this is going to be it's going to be fun. So they're all coming home Thursday night, so we can they can do work and do school on Friday, so we can get out of here early to go do that so um yeah and then they'll be back just like it's like 10 days later for (laughs) for thanksgiving um and again i think they're going to come early so that they can kind of all you know work a little bit whatever on the wednesday before chloe and i can start making pies stuff like that so i'm i'm gonna get my my cup all filled up for having the kids home again and i'm very very excited and um, before we move on to the quilting segment, I did want to say thank you for everyone who um, kind of gave me their feedback about whether or not you like this as an audio podcast, if you would rather it be video. Um, I think pretty much everybody on, yeah, I do post this as an audio only on YouTube and everyone there said we would like it <laughs> if there was something to look at, but kind of, I felt rather overwhelmingly people were just like, you know what, I like my podcasts in the audio format, because I like to do other things while I'm listening. So that's, I guess what I'm going to say right here is turning this into um, a video podcast is not going to be a big priority. Although I think I would like to experiment with that format and maybe, I don't know, do one once a month or something. I don't know. I don't know. I enjoy watching them. Um, which is why I was thinking about doing them, but it, it is, it's a lot more work. <laughs> so I was thinking maybe if I did one monthly, it would just be a standalone. I don't know. So anyways, thank you so much for weighing in on that. It really kind of helped me figure out where to go with that. Well, before we head into the quilting segment, I would once again like to thank the Fat Quarter Shop for being such an amazing sponsor of this show. The Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies. Right now, you can make a reservation for the Jolly Box 2022 Limited Edition Mystery Quilting Box. If you're wondering what a Jolly Box is, it is a mystery box that is filled with a collection of quilting items. Um, uh, if you are a little bit curious as I was, I went back and watched some YouTube videos for what it was last year and it's some, um, cool notions and fabric and thread 
and um, just all pad, quilting patterns, things like that. So the um, it costs uh, fifty one ninety nine, and you would put in a four ninety nine reservation fee, and then pay the balance when it comes out, when it ships in November here later this month. But the box contains over ninety eight dollars worth of supplies. So if you would like just a little surprise gift to yourself, you could ask for it for Christmas, buy it for yourself, maybe put it under the tree as just a little mystery gift. Um, it's full of a bunch of adorable quilting supplies, and I think you would really like it. I will put a link in the show notes. All right. I have to say, it's very cozy in here right now. I've got my cup of tea, and I lit a candle. I love these candles, and I've talked before about, like, I love candles, although I am sensitive to very strong candles. I cannot do the Yankee candle. This is from Target, and it's that, you know, Joanna Gaines line. Was it, like, Hearth and Home, something like that? And it's cardamom and vetiver which sounds like what does that smell like it smells delicious it's a little bit like i don't know spicy or something but so i'm in the little back bedroom here Uh, my husband does not love the smell of candles so um i just I, i have to take it where i can get it all right let's talk some quilting so as i mentioned in some previous podcasts i've been kind of having trouble i get i get obsessed with things and i'm currently obsessed with cross stitch which makes me not really feel like i want to make quilts um but i know that i love making quilts and i'm just trying to figure out like what why am i not excited about this right now and i made a realization that maybe this is what it is that um the quilts that i have that are like in my queue right now even partially sewn like this granny square quilt that i completely lost uh, (laughs) completely (laughs) lost traction on um that quilt and then making another cabin valley quilt which is this modern log cabin that I really liked I have everything for those two quilts but I've made both of those two quilts before and I think that's my problem it's like I need to be inspired I need to make something new so what I did once I kind of realized that last weekend I went into my Instagram saved um, you know collection for quilts and I just started scrolling through that like you know have I saved something that you know that I could start on and the only thing that I found um, and I picked this one because I thought it would be kind of a low barrier to entry <laughs> is um, there is an Instagram um, channel called uh, or account called Southern Charm Quilts I believe and she had a quilt a while ago called the Migration Quilt and um All it is, is just like squares with stitch and flip corners, kind of different sizes. And then, you know, so kind of a low volume square and then just little corners, different sizes. Um, And then when you lay the quilt out, you put those, you know, you do the stitch and flip on two opposite corners, not every corner. And then when you lay it out, you put it out so that those... um, little corner triangles are touching so they look almost like a little butterfly so which she called it migration and I was like oh that's kind of a cool idea I wonder if I could play around with that um and um so I mean in all honesty I didn't go buy the pattern because it's stitch and flip corners like it was just more of a you know it's not going to be exactly like her quilt it was just like oh that's you know I've wanted to do it's there's a there it hit a couple things for me I've wanted to do a low volume quilt so I went through all my low volume fabrics and I also wanted to try to be a little bit braver about using white and off-white together um I have kind of a questionable you know pile um of low volumes that are maybe not as low volume as I want them to be so we'll see how those work in later and then I was doing it like all blue like I have lots of blues because I do love blue from light to aqua to teal to you know more on the navy side and then um but I was thinking okay that that's a possibility but it might be kind of fun to you know have some pops of color so I pulled out some pinks and reds and did I I think I did orange but I put that one back some green um and and I just started sewing you know I cut some squares and just started sewing I was just going to do like a little sample and I'm not quite done just to see if I was liking the way it was coming together I did decide that I wanted it to mostly be blue so on many of the squares each corner will be blue and then on some and it, let me just say this every square will have at least one blue corner and then some will have a little pop of color corner and we're just going to see how that goes. Um, I, I sewed on it Sunday. Um, I did not, um, 
you know, I haven't even, you know, sewn all the second quarters. I did, I did a bunch on, on one corner and then I'm going to do the rest. So I think if I've got time this afternoon, I might get back to that and just lay down on the design wall and just see if it's an idea that I wanted to pursue. So it's a little, it's a little bit improv because I'm making those corners different sizes. Um, and so there's not a lot of precision cutting that is happening here. And I am using my stash, which I am very happy about. I'm just realizing that I don't feel like I have a really big stash. But every time I make kind of one of these scrap quilts, um, I just realize that it just barely puts a dent <laughs> in it. So I guess unless I use, it would take up more if I used them for quilt backs. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Um, so anyways, so I, that's what I'm kind of thinking about is, and it, it does, uh, you know, it's a little improv and it's low volume and it's from my stash. So these tick, a, this ticks a lot of boxes for me. So we'll just see if I can, you know, kind of maintain that level of, um, you know, interest in it. So um, there is a quilt along. There's a lot of quilt alongs going on with the Fat Quarter Shop, and that's always a good way, in my opinion, to get inspired is to just quilt along with other people and, you know, have a little self-imposed deadline there. Um, I haven't done, I mean, I, I did the Christmas one with them, but beyond that, I haven't done a, a quilt along with them for a while. Um, and so a new Jolly Bar book came out. And what a Jolly Bar is, is if, uh, a layer cake um, is a, is, these are all Moda terms, right? A layer cake, because they've got all the bakery terms, is a 10 inch square. So you can get a layer cake, you know, pack that's 10 inch squares of like a full line. So Jolly Bars are you just cut a layer cake in half. So it's a five by 10 inch stack. And um, so they, and that's like a fat quarter shop cut and they so that to help people know what to do with them because people do love pre-cuts because you get it's an, it's an inexpensive way to sample a full line but um, not everybody um, knows what to do with these pre-cuts so people buy them and they sit on shelves and we really should use our fabric right so anyway so they have these jolly bar books and she the fourth one jolly bar book number four volume four just came out honestly i don't always love all the patterns in these books but jolly bar <laughs> jolly bar book four is a good one and i think i'm going to buy that one and they are doing there's one particular quilt that i thought was very cute in it it's the one that's on the cover i'll put a link in the show notes um but they are so it's full of, I don't know how many quilts. I don't have the book right now. But in January, they're going to do a sampler quilt from it, which is one of the things that Fat Quarter Shop loves to do is, is when the, a book comes out to do like a, you know, a little smattering of, of each of them. And I don't always love sampler quilts either because they, you know, seem sometimes like there's not a... A, a design motif that, you know, a unifying motif. Um, but this one was really good it was it was a really good one so um i might join in on that january jolly bar i was trying I'll, I'll give you more information as i get it I, I know that i saw it somewhere because i wrote it down for you guys but i couldn't find it on the on the uh, fat quarter shop website so stay tuned for that um and yeah i'll have to like sort of start shopping for what um jolly bar that i would like like what um, I mean, again, I guess I could go to my stash, but it would be super fun to <laughs> to play with a new line. So I'm thinking about that. So um, so that's kind of what's going through my mind right now, quilting wise. But before we leave the segment, I want to talk to you about a um, very cool event coming up hosted by CNT Publishing. So CNT Publishing has this um, crafty course offshoot called Creative Spark. And they are doing an event called the Handmade Holiday Bazaar. And this sounds like so much fun. It is on November 12th and you can log in live or um, everything's recorded and you can watch it later. I am going to try to do a combination of both. There's a couple that I definitely would like to watch the live instruction. Um, the kids will be home that day, so I don't know really where that's gonna go, but one can hope. So let me just tell you, they have a number of um, makers and artisans that will be sharing projects and walking you through instruction on how to make them and let me just give you a little bit of a, of a taste of the types of things there are these adorable hand embroidered christmas ornaments there's a what's called festive birds on a branch lumbar pillow a hand stitched holiday card a glasses case sugar and spice doll apron which i believe is for like a 
American Girl style doll if you've got kids or grandkids with those, a paper pieced Santa pillow, festive art quilt with hand embroidery, clay flowered earrings, a Christmas table runner, and even a, a winter wonderland candle. So we've got all kinds of different um, crafty things if it's, if, you know, not just quilting, which I think is pretty cool. So it is $59.99 and I will put a link in the show notes and you can go over and you can see who all the people are that are doing um, these classes and um, just uh, full disclosure, I am an affiliate for that. So I would get a tiny commission if you did that no pressure, but I am definitely going to, to join in on this. I think it sounds like so much fun. Um, again, check the, the show notes if you want to get a link over there. It is called the um, Handmade Holiday Bazaar over at Creative Spark. All right, let's talk a little bit cross stitch, which, you know, I've admitted to have been uh, I'm just a little bit obsessed right now. The first thing I want to um, say is that I finished up the support group um, stitch from Fat Quarter Shop, which we did as uh, as a stitch along and a fundraiser for the National Breast Cancer Foundation. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that stitch, which was um, I thought about just putting it in a frame. It would have fit in like in a in an eight by ten frame. I even bought the frame, and then I was going to return it, but I lost the receipt. So now I have the frame for something else. <laughs> but um, I had my friend Minky over for tea one day, and we were chatting, and I said, "What do you think about putting this?" Um, on a project bag, which I completely stole that idea from um, the what she called Sweetwater Stitcher on YouTube. She was also doing it. She did her stitch all in um, hand dyed pinks. It was super cute. So she only ended up doing like two or three rows of the of the chart, and then she put it on a project bag. But she'd mentioned I'm going to put this on a project bag. I'm like, oh, that's so perfect. So. I said, Minky, um, who, you know, she has, a, you, Minky has a YouTube channel where she creates all kinds of things, lots of things with zippers. So I'm like, what about like a, instead of a small zipper pouch, what about a bigger one? And so she took that and she just put her own spin on it um, with her new line, Forgotten Memories. And so she created a large, you know, project bag and um, it's got a clear vinyl cover and you can see the cross stitch from the outside. It's on the inside and um, it's got, um, you know, you, it can stand up. It's got some thickness, you know, it's got, I guess that's called a gusset. And so it just, it came out super, super cute. And it really matches the last thing she did with a cross stitch, <laughs> which I gave her and she turned it into one of those, um, well, it's it's like a little book when you open it up, clear clear vinyl again with two zippers. So one side um, I keep my floss, and the other side I keep my needle minder and scissors and um, extra needles and glasses, things like that. And it's like a little book, so and I just keep that inside a project bag, so I have those things with me all the time, and so they look super cute together. Um, so it's called the clearly perfect project bag and i'll put a link in the show notes she has as usual a pattern plus a tutorial video on um, youtube so you can see how she makes it which is a very nice little extra when you buy the pattern so that was um, a very fun collaboration with minky and um, she actually she came over and she took the pictures and the videos over at my house and it was very fun to watch the master work <laughs> you know like minky does absolutely gorgeous photos and and reels and videos and it was just like very fun to to watch uh, her her process so that was that was an extra treat there i also finished a, a little fun little stitch called autumn garden and i finished that last weekend and i finished as they call it i did a it was a, it's a fully finished an ffo fully finished project because i didn't just complete the stitch but i turned it into something um so this is just it's like it got a little um what does it have on it it is a pumpkin and a mushroom and some vines and this is very cool a thing that i just stumbled across there is an instagram um, account called cross stitch the rainbow like x stitch the rainbow and so what what happened is is they got together 25 cross stitch designers and then they gave them um somebody hand dyed i think it's called oh like cottage threads i'm sorry i don't remember right now um it's it's actually a, a company in australia hand dyed four different skeins of floss and it's like there's like a um a green and a you know kind of a pumpkiny orange and what is the other one? I can't remember because I didn't actually buy these, but maybe like a, um, you know, a, a soft yellow. And then the third one, 
or maybe it's brown. I can't remember right now. Then the third one is like a variegation of all those colors, um, which was super cool. By the time I found out about all this, that uh, floss was all long sold out. So I, they luckily gave you a DMC conversions, which is what I used. So, um, so they challenged 25 designers to come up with a, um, a cross stitch design, like no bigger than, I think it was like 60 by 60 stitches. So they're all smalls and, um, all using this one palette. And then I think various Etsy shops and stuff, you could buy the thread and they had like a little curated five, um, patterns or, or whatever. So I actually found it's called, uh, from wild violet. I'll put a link in the show notes. She's a cross stitch designer. It was actually, I think she rotates what's free. It was free on her website the day that I checked. So I downloaded that and, um, it's just super cute. And it's called the whole, the whole thing. I think they do one of these collaborations every season. So this was the garden. It was called autumn garden was the whole collaboration. And then this particular pattern was also called autumn garden. And I'm hoping they'll do something for winter as well. And that I could get in on buying the fancy floss. Um, but anyways, so I fully finished it. I put it on um, what they call sticky board, wrapped it. It was harder than it looked. And then, then the taller, uh, the target dollar spot, which is not a dollar anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I bought these for five dollars three I think they're six inch square frames they just came as a three pack and they were Christmassy and they're kind of cheap but I just glued um, my little cross stitch project right on top <laughs> of um, their design so it's just it, it was the perfect size frame that whole process was a little bit tricky to get it to look good um and so i don't i don't know how i, I want to get better at that because i'm not going to pay someone to do this for me but anyway so that was kind of cute so i've got this fun little um fall autumn you know cross stitch i do think that i'm going to for my these little small cross stitch, stitch projects i think i'm just going to make them into little pillows that i can just all put into a bowl or something that seems more like me this little framed thing is just kind of sitting on a table leaning up against a wall which is fine but I'm I kind of learned something about myself after doing that so that was that was fun and that was a little nice bit of a break from I've been working on the flea market flowers um, which I absolutely love that pattern but it's big and I do kind of get now that every once in a while you're just like I want to do something else so that was a nice break went back to flea market flowers and um now my other like I need a break project um, are some stitch cards in here. Let me grab them. These are designed by Lori Holt um, for the Fat Quarter Shop. And um, I am now working on what's a set N and they are super cute. It's like a very 70s thing. There's a little gnome and a mushroom and like a, a orange flower and a snail. I will not do the snail. Snails are not my thing. Um, but these are all like what the, the stitch count is 34 by 34. So they are little smalls and they all have these borders around them, which can be kind of frustrating to stitch because, um, yeah, I was off by one square and I had to rip a bunch of stuff out yesterday, but I am currently working on the little gnome is I'm just as far as doing the, um, the border right now, but that's super fun. So that, um, I actually treated myself to some, a little bit of a variety of cross stitch fabrics. So I wanted to buy some linen. Fat Quarter Shop was out of what I wanted, but um, I do like 25 Count Lugana. So again, I wanted Cloud, which is kind of white. They were out of that. So my next, it's on my wish list for the next time. Um, but I got, oh, I didn't bring it in here. Um, I got oatmeal, um, which is um, what I stitched my little. Um, the, that little autumn garden thing on. And it's funny because I've used cloud, which is, is off white, 25 count Lugana, and that's super soft and oatmeal isn't. And I think it's when they dye it, it kind of stiffens up a little bit. And then, I don't know, I got one other color. And then I did buy 28 count Lugana in barley, which is kind of like a, a light tan. Um, and, uh, and that is perfect for um, this, like this little gnome stitch I'm doing. And I did want to, you know, play around with something a little bit smaller. And then my next stop will be 32 count linen and we'll see how I do there. So I did finish up my other stitch card set and I do think I want to stitch these again. This is set M and um, I gave this one to Minky as a thank you, just as an unfinished stitch. <laughs> um, but it's the one, it's got a teapot and a teacup and um, a strawberry and then a group of strawberries and um, I realized 
um, on that one that I should have I did it on cloud which is you know pretty much white and there's a lot of white flowers in that um, in one of them and I thought and it didn't show up so well so um, I'll do that on a little bit of a dark one so I did that as just like a little um, two by two layout you know like kind of like four patch and I think I'm when I restitch this for myself I think I will do them as smalls just little individual ones that I'll just finish into into little pillows so that's been um, that's been pretty fun um, and the last thing that I just recently bought, and I don't know when I'm going to stitch this, maybe during Christmas time, is there is a guy, what is it called? Like pigeon coop something. Again, I will put it in the show notes. But it's a man and he has um, some uh, kind of like nice modern um, designs. I, I really like his style. They are not cutesy. And he has one called Three Pines. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are a Louise Penny fan, you know what that means. And he's from Quebec, so he knows what he's doing there. And there's actually two designs for three pines. It's three pine trees and one, and there's some things around it. One of them is like snow and snowflakes. And another one is just more like pine cones. And I haven't decided which one I'll do. And you can intermix the designs however you want. So um, I'm excited about uh, stitching that because of the Three Pines TV show that's going to be coming out soon, which we'll talk about in a minute. So that is another one. And then plus he kind of finishes them in a very cute, just simple way. Again, I think it's because he's a man. Um, he does a lot of hoop finishes um, and, and that's just, you know, nice, nice and clean. And I like that, but he's got a lot of really great designs. Him and um, there's another cross stitch designer called the the Tiny Modernist, who's, who's a man. And I really like his um, aesthetic as well. So that's what's going on. Cross stitch. I did, I think in the last episode I talked about like maybe on Mondays I would hand sew and Tuesdays I would cross stitch and Wednesdays I would knit. I did totally did not do that, but I did um, spend some time knitting on my elementary shawl. I'm curious how many of you guys start. I felt like there was a lot of you guys that started that last year. I'm curious if anybody's finished it, if anybody's picking it back up, but I am enjoying knitting again. Oh, I also pulled out um, I was partway on a hat that I was knitting for Knots of Love. So I got some knitting time in um, too. Just like there are times when I don't have the right light. Like we're watching a TV show or a movie or something. Um, it, cross stitching is a little hard, especially on these smaller count fabrics. <laughs> um, that So knitting really kind of fits in uh, to that little slot a little bit better. All right, let's talk books. I, you know, I don't have a ton to to really report here, um, I've been listening to, and I'm not, I think I brought it up last time, Anne Patchett's These Precious Days, which is a book of um, essays that um, she wrote uh, during the pandemic. And I am listening to the audiobook, and I need to, I'm, I, had it and then they took it away from me <laughs> I ran my Libby loan out and so I'm waiting to for it to come back because I did not finish it's kind of a long book um, even though I listened to everything on at least 1.25 speed if not faster um, but Ann Patchett reads her own essays which I think is just this you know layer of wonderfulness and um, I'm really enjoying I'm enjoying that one of my favorite um, essays that she um, talks about is when she and her husband um, go through decluttering their house, and she's like in her mid fifties, she doesn't have any children, um, but she, her childhood friend, she has a childhood friend whose father died, and Anne volunteered to help this friend go through her father's house after you know he was the last, he left everything to her, and he was a little bit, I don't know, a hoarder is the right word. He had a lot of stuff. He sort of changed up his whole aesthetic many times in his life and like he just kept reinventing who he was so he just had all of this stuff and she realized that as a woman who number one would likely outlive her husband and number two as a woman that doesn't have any kids like who was going to do this for her so she started going through her house and and I have done this and I need to do it again but just you know room by room drawer by drawer and um and her way of doing it, everything that she was decluttering, she was putting in her basement to be dealt with later. And I was personally thinking, oh, that's a mistake. That's going to be so overwhelming. And she said that as a writer that she learned that not to mix the process of writing with editing. And so this was her <laughs> way of following through on that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, but what was one of the kind of the most fun things about this essay is that she was decluttering these things like 
champagne flutes and brandy sniffers that she had received, asked for and received as gifts when she was a teenager, preparing for the life of an adult. And so it was just very interesting. She'd never used them. So it was interesting to her to really reflect on what she thought adult life would be versus, you know, the type of adult that she really became. And, you know, just a lot of silver and platters and just all this fancy stuff. And um, so she uh, she's just working through it. Her husband was fully on board and he started going through things um, as well. And it, and then there were some tough decisions to be made. She had collected a manual typewriters and she was like, you know, wondering what she should do with these. And yeah. Um, and I think, okay, the, the where things start to turn here a little bit is that her husband, who's a doctor, invited his nurse and her daughter who was getting married over to pick up some things. And at first, Anne was like, no, 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 this isn't how we're doing it. But then she realized that this was the joy he was going to get out of the process was the giving away part. And it was a lot of mixed feelings as this young girl, young woman, um, was uh, taking the champagne flutes and the silver platters <laughs> and all the things that Anne thought she would need as you know and want as an adult and never did really use and she and she had these very mixed feelings about she was happy to get rid of them but also guilty about saddling somebody else with this whole obligation that she had put upon herself so it was very interesting I enjoyed it very much it kind of made me realize okay we I keep saying it and we're not doing it um but we we really need to go through the house so that was a the main book that I was listening to um and then I am just continuing to um, plug away at that uh, stitches and crime series I don't even know what the names of the books are because I just buy them as these little three packs I'm on the book seven eight and nine right now from I forgot her name. It's like something bookins. I will put it in the show notes as usual. I've been talking about them for months because I'm on the eighth of nine books and it takes a while and I'm, I'm reading those on my Kindle. Uh, it's like nine dollars for three books. So it's three books a book. Very, it's a deal. And um, for cozy mysteries, they're not, they're not hokey. You know, sometimes I will admit I can read some pretty hokey cozy mysteries. These are, these are fun. And the other thing that I picked up, I was just looking through my Kindle one morning um, realizing, you know, in the morning, I was just looking for some kind of more inspirational nonfiction read. And I'm rereading this book called The Simple Life. And it's by Rhonda Herzl. She has a uh, very popular blog called Down to Earth. Again, show notes. Um, I discovered her many years ago, when the kids were little, and I kind of just found about about this whole sort of simple living movement. That was those were the days it was fun. It was all new. And um, she's a woman, she's in Australia, and when she's around my age, kind of mid, she might have been a little bit later, maybe it was her, she was in her late 50s, she gave up her um, business as a technical writer and um, decided she was just going to really um, change the way they lived. Her husband uh, still owned like a little store, um, but they live in Australia with kind of a lot of land and there's a creek, it's all very beautiful, and she was going to make do with what they had at home basically so in and she I guess was a person who spent a lot of money on clothes and eating out and fancy coffee and and just really did this whole 180 degrees turnaround and started making bread and and you know buying uh, groceries on sale and you know creating an extended pantry and they she and her husband together just um, really grew the most amazing backyard garden they had chickens you know this whole thing I just find all very inspirational and um, so she wrote a book about that. She started a blog to kind of, you know, document the journey. Eventually wrote this book called The Simple Life. And then a, another book later on called Down to Earth, which is what the name of the blog was. And I have them both. And I've read them both more than once. And it's just, um, I find it kind of uh, homemaking inspiration about, you know, why we do what we do and why there is value in um, being at home and cooking for yourself and keeping things simple. And she is absolutely the opposite of any kind of a showy blogger. You know, it's just, you know, a very normal looking home where she is, um, you know, redoing and, and making things from scratch. And, um, you know, n things are not like new and fancy and from the container store type of a deal. So that's called The Simple Life. I'll put a, a link in the show notes. It's a quick read. I think it's very inexpensive. I have, have both her books on Kindle and it's been, um, yeah, just kind of fun to, I, I'm a kind of a inspiration junkie. So I just need to like read things to, to get myself uh, geared up again. 
Let's talk TV shows. Um, okay, last episode, I had said my daughter had for years wanted me to watch The Dairy Girls, and for some reason, I had just never gotten around to it. And my husband and I started it, and oh my gosh, it is hilarious. I don't know what took me so long to watch this show. Okay, I will tell you from the get-go that there definitely has some language. Um, yeah, there's the uh, there's that one particular character that just is dropping the F-bomb left and right. Not normally my thing, but it's just the whole show is so funny. I'm just forgiving them for that. So it takes place in like 1994. I had to look this up because I'm like, is this the 80s? I wasn't quite sure. It's in Ireland. It's in there. They uh, this is a group of friends who are in high school. They're all I think around 16. Um, and um, they live in Northern Ireland during what we call the Troubles, right? So this has been very interesting to me because, um, I mean, I remember this time. I didn't really know a ton about it when it was going on. But, you know, they're everywhere they go, like there's just, there's people with machine guns and they have to stop at checkpoints if they want to go, you know, into the Republic. And, you know, just, it's, it's all, so I always like to get my history in, in fictional format. <laughs> <laughs> so I've it's made me look some things up and and um you know just about that time period. So anyways, it's just a group of girls they um they go to an all girls school, Catholic school, except for this cousin. One of their cousins came over from England, this guy. And um so apparently they've decided to change the school to to be co-ed but he is the one guy in an all-girl catholic school and nobody likes him because he's english and he's very funny so anyways um it's it's very cute it's uh, that the latest season just dropped and it's so easy to binge i mean i think we started this earlier this week we're almost done with all three seasons because you know they're 25 minute episodes six episodes a season so you know you can fly through them really fast but anyway um, absolutely hilarious. If you like like ba Maeve Benchy books like I do, I think you'll really like this. There's all these scenes that I can just totally, you know, picturing this could be set like a Maeve Benchy book. So that's been really fun. Um, the other show that we really enjoyed, it is on Netflix, I think. It's called The Lincoln Lawyer. Um, so I've talked before about um, that I liked the show Bosch which is on Amazon Prime, and it is um, based on a Michael Connelly book series um, with this character, Bosch. Well, The Lincoln Lawyer is um, also a different character by Michael Connelly. And um, so the, it's it's wonderful. So it's about a, um, a lawyer who is kind of coming back after he, um, he's been kind of out of the law for a while because he had um, a surfing injury that hurt, his, you know, where he hurt his back and he got hooked on painkillers and then became an addict. And so now he's all cleaned up and ready to restart his life. Um, his name's Mickey and he's got, he's, I think, uh, he's supposed to be part Hispanic, but he's got the strangest accent. Uh, you, it, it grew on me after a while, but I was just like, what accent is this? Um, and um, the reason it's called the Lincoln Lawyer is, I guess, before all he, you know, his his troubles there, he um, he kind of operated. He he owns several Lincoln cars, and he operates out of his car. So he hires a driver so that he can work in the back seat. He thinks better when the car is moving. <laughs> so that's all <laughs> very interesting. Um, but he's obviously a great lawyer. Um, his ex-wife, one of his ex-wives in the show, who's a district attorney. He's a he's a uh, like a criminal defense lawyer and his one of his, his first ex-wife is nev campbell if you um, remember her from i want to say party of five in the 80s um i always liked her so it's kind of fun to watch these you know she was a teenager then now she's a middle-aged woman um she does a great job playing his ex-wife so anyways i really enjoyed the lincoln lawyer um what else? Oh, I told you I started watching the show Manifest, um, which is about a group of people on a plane that goes through some turbulence as it's coming back from, I think it's Jamaica. And when they get back, when they land, it's five and a half years later and nobody knows exactly why this happened. They have kind of these special powers. This show has gotten so weird. <laughs> I can't believe I'm still watching it. It's kind of a weird, fun ride. Um, the new season, I was going to be like, okay, once 
I'm done with the, you know, like the three seasons or whatever. I'm going to stop. And then as soon as I finished, the fourth season dropped. I'm like, okay, I have to check this out. So it's one of those shows I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I'm watching, but, and it's just kind of gone off the rails. It's so crazy, but also kind of fun. Um, a movie that I'm looking forward to watching and have not is the new Enola Holmes and it's just Enola Holmes 2. Um, I watched the first one a few years ago when it came out and that's Millie Bobby Brown playing Sherlock Holmes' younger sister. Um, and so it's like a period piece. Um, I, I haven't heard anything about Enola Holmes 2. Totally enjoyed the first one. So I'm looking forward to just uh, stitching away one evening and watching that. And then the last thing I want to tell you about is the new Three Pines TV show. I will put a trailer in the show notes. I put it in the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group. I put I, I put it in there. Um, so, you know, if you're new around here, I'm obsessed with Louise Penny and the, it's funny that they're called the Inspector Gamache books because he's like, hasn't been an inspector for 15 books, but um you know, the, the gamache books, love them. And they turned the first one, Still Life, into a movie, which I did not love, although I did think the casting was pretty good on most characters. Um, but they are doing a TV show, and I am scared to death they are going to ruin it. I subscribe to the Louise Penny newsletter. I subscribe to very few newsletters, but I do enjoy hers. And she talks about how, um, did I tell you this last episode? I may have, you know. It'd be good if I ever checked these things. But um, she was also scared to watch when she saw the first episode, but she's very happy with it. The trailer makes things look very dark, like Three Pines is this dark place where bad things happen. And as if you've read the books, obviously, I mean, okay, we know that people are murdered in Three Pines. <laughs> obviously that happens. But it's also like this magical, wonderful place. So I am curious if the editing for the trailer is a little over the top on the dark side. Um, I hope so, because it's it shouldn't be dark, but it needs to be deeper than what the movie was, because the movie just made it seem like this you know, a shallow, cozy mystery. And again, that's not what these books are. Um, so anyway, so we'll see. We will see how this goes. I think, I was going to check this before I started. I think it comes out in December. So I'm very excited. Um, yeah, conflicted, conflicted. I and, and Louise Penny actually said that, you know, they had to make some changes to make it work for TV. And but she, she was on board with the decisions. I mean, I don't know, maybe, of course, she would say that. I don't know. But I am excited about it. Again, I will put the trailer in the um, in the show notes. All right, last segment here is is my kind of my catch all segment. And I was not sure what to talk about today. <sighs> so one thing that my friend Francis and I have ta been talking about. Um, Francis of the Off Kilter Quilt, and we are um, doing our little collaborative blog called The Empty Nest Chronicles. I'll put a link in the show notes for that. Um, our last post, we do post on Friday, was all about like cozy. Like what, what does cozy mean? Why do we care about cozy? Um, are you a cozy minimalist? Are you a cozy maximalist? You know, just some, some thoughts. I think we will revisit that topic um, a lot because there's a lot to it. But anyways, we kind of got started on that blog post. And, um, and one, so th that just kind of led to some, you know, f between us, some talks about the, the holidays and, um, you know, getting ready for the holidays. And what does that mean? I, I'm, there's part of me that wants to, like, there's part of me that right now feels like um, I need a, a project to work on. You know, this whole year I've worked on various projects. Um, at the beginning of the year, I actually set four goals for myself. One was to um, do the bathroom renovation. One was to schedule a big family vacation. One was to create a cutting garden. And one was to lose some weight. Well, bathroom renovation, check. Big family vacation, check cutting garden um the drought just took that one off the table and then losing weight's been a bit of a wash so i'll talk about that in a little bit here um but so anyways i always just you know I've, i like to have these big projects that i can just continue working on and right now i feel like i don't really have one um and part of me is just like well that's good because it's the holidays and you always get stressed out about the holidays the holidays are your big project i'm not so sure if that is going to be true or not but 
one thing that I think we all kind of desire at this time of year before the layers of, um, you know, holiday decorating take over, which I love. I love that increased coziness and increased amount of stuff around. Um, but it's nice if you kind of are going into that feeling like you've got a clean slate. So Francis and I have been talking a bit about, you know, maybe doing some deep cleaning through the holiday before the holidays really get going. Um, and, and really places where we're going to be spending a lot of time. So like maybe the kitchen, the family room, frankly, my sewing room, AKA the dining room, um, could use some work because that is, you know, we do use that space for Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner. So that means I need to, <laughs> to, to clean up a bit there. Um, I also, I, we do have a China cabinet. Um, that kind of, I feel like that dates me with my mom's China, which is this uh, blue Danube, um, which is funny because I just bring it out at this, these holidays of Thanksgiving and Christmas and it's blue and white. So like, you know, from a color perspective, doesn't even work with those. That's fine. But I like to, around this time of year, go through and like wash all of that so that I don't have to worry about it. So I know it's clean because it's been sitting there really since last Christmas in a closed china cabinet, but I know it gets dusty. So anyway, so maybe do that. Um, and I'm, I'm not really talking about necessarily decluttering, but more just like the deep cleaning, like just getting in there, um, you know, with the cobwebs and the baseboards and cleaning the blinds and the windows and, you know, just getting the corners and all that kind of stuff to just start um, where things feel really fresh. Now, maybe that takes on some decluttering as you're going. But I, I think about this um, blog post I read many years ago, back in the heyday of blogging. So I don't know, this is maybe 2010. I will see if I can dig it up to put a link in it. I love this blogger called, um, her name was Anna from Pleasant View Schoolhouse. And she lives in this like kind of old farmhouse in Texas with all her homeschooled children all wearing <laughs> homemade dresses kind of a thing. But she talks about going into Advent with the same kind of idea and that she for, I don't know, like a week, got up before the rest of the family, you know, basically got a, a, a bucket of soapy water, warm soapy water, and basically deep cleaned like one room early in the morning, each morning for for a week solid or something, just for that idea of just like a really clean slate going into the holidays. So anyways, I want to find that. It was very inspiring. Um, I don't know how, if I could necessarily really deep clean a room uh, Every, you know, every morning. <laughs> but um, I, I kind of love the idea. So anyways, so we're kind of, you know, uh, thinking about that. Um, I'm also, and, and maybe we'll do, I don't know, I'm going to talk to Francis about it. But maybe we'll do just a little bit of a, you know, like a little homemaking challenge of just to, you know, get getting ready for the holidays. Um, I'm also spending a little time looking at the last two months of the year. So we're here at the beginning, beginning of November. And of course, we know it's all going to be crazy from here on out, right? Thanksgiving is going to be here before we know it. Christmas is going to be here before we know it. Um, but I'm still looking at what can I do? I meant to do this 90 days <laughs> before the end of the year, but that did not happen. What can I do? What kind of things can I, um, you know, what kind of goals can I make that I can start to work on now so that I don't feel like I need to, to start over with a whole clean slate in, in January. What, what are some just simple habits that I can really just start to introduce now and build on so that um, January is just uh, a logical extension? So I don't know what that will be, but I'm going to kind of maybe journal, kind of experiment um, with all of that, um, you know, uh, in, in the coming weeks here. So maybe you might want to consider doing something similar. All right. I think that's about it for today. This is almost a short podcast for me these days. Um, thank you for everyone who has left rate, ratings and reviews. Uh, I don't think there's any new ones um, since my last podcast, but if you feel so inspired, share this with a friend who you think might enjoy it. Get over to Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts and, and rate and review. That helps people to, to find the podcast. And I really appreciate that. As I mentioned before, you can find links to most of the things that I talk about over on my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day. I'm on Instagram as Kristen Esser, on YouTube as Kristen Esser, and please consider joining the Simple Handmade Every Day Facebook group so that we can keep the conversation going. I love to hear from you guys. Have a wonderful week.